But this project today is a really, really cool project. We love this. Mm -hmm. We're going to be making a Christmas cookie sweatshirt because who does not love mm, Christmas cookies? This puff vinyl is like perfect for Christmas cookies. Yes, because it kind of gives it like the look and the mm -hmm. texture of like what a real cookie would be like. And then we use yes. Caesar printable DTV or any other kind of printable vinyl that you have and then layer it over top of that puff to give it like that icing look. Yes. It's so cute. It's like the royal icing cookies everybody loves. Yes. Very cute. So, How are you all today? First of all, um, how mm. stinking cute is this? Merry Christmas. Merry Chrysler. Um, <laughs> I'm obsessed with this like cookie, um, Christmas cookie sweatshirt, and I'm Loving like the dark with the light colors. Yes. Of course, you can do this on whatever color sweatshirt that you want, but let's go overhead so you can really get a good look at what the puff, the Caesar DTV on the puff looks like. I just think it gives it such a realistic, like cute effect. I mean, it looks like you slapped a cookie on that sweater. It looks like you slapped a cookie <laughs> on it. Right smack on it. I mean, and it's so simple. Like, I really think once we create this, you all are going to understand how simple this is. Now, we are going to be manipulating a PNG file today. Um, so, I'm going to show you exactly how you can manipulate some PNG files um, to separate these out and get these separate because we do want to keep all of this. Um, like I said, these are print and cut images on the top. So, with that said, let's go ahead and hop over into Design Space. So here in Design Space, you can see that we have three cookies. Now, you don't have to use just three. Um, I actually wanted to use more than three, but the way that the, um, the vinyl, like the puff vinyl was cutting, it was going to make them pretty small and you can choose which cookies you want on your sweatshirt. You could do like family sweatshirts and everybody have different cookies. Oh, that's a good idea. Um, or just do one large cookie and each person yeah. have a different cookie would be super, super cute. That's cute too. Um, so let's hop over to our website and we're going to go to our cut files and I'm going to show you which cut file we're using. First of all, we're going to sign in. <laughs> Because says, this brings me back to puffy paints, but so much better. This is like, oh my gosh, yes, the modern day puffy paint, absolutely, but way better for sure. I don't know, I low key love some puffy paint. I do puffy too. Puffy paint sweaters. <laughs> I would have probably been one of those people making those puffy paint sweatshirts. Oh, I did. Did you make some? Oh, yeah. I don't think I've ever made any. Oh, I made puff paint sweatshirts, t shirts. All the stuff. Oh my gosh. Loved it. Was obsessed with it. That's so funny. So on our website, if you just search Christmas cookie, you can see there are multiple Christmas cookies that you can choose from. Like you could pick these Christmas cookies. Those are cute. Those are really cute. I was just feeling more of the, um, I don't like the muted tones for this one. I do like the bright tones. And here, why is it not popping up? Uh oh, let's just type in cookie yes. and see if it pops up. I like that little Christmas tree and the gingerbread. Those were cute. There they oh, are. Yeah, it's those. under cookie design. I do love those. So this is the one that I use today, and we'll click on it to make it bigger. Um, Cheryl asks, where do you get the puff vinyl? You can get it at quite a few different places. We really love using 143 vinyl, which, of course, if you all have been around our channel, you know that... Um, we are, we are in, have an affiliate program with 143, um, meaning that we will get like commission and things like that, but we still absolutely love them. They are a great, um, retailer for vinyl, but we like using today. We're going to be using the Caesar puff vinyl. Um, that has been probably my favorite brand. And here in a minute, I'm going to show you, we do have a, um, reference if you use other vinyls like other puff vinyls because Alicia did a video not too long ago mm -hmm. comparing multiple puff vinyls. You compared the Starcraft, mm -hmm. the Caesar, and Techrat. And Techrat puff vinyl. Mm -hmm. um, they all ended up working pretty good. Yeah, but they have like different heat settings, different yes. cuts, and yeah, there was, yes. you guys have to watch that video if you're really wanting to learn 
in depth about puff vinyl only, that yes. video goes into way depth. So. Yes. So back to our share screen. You can see here, this is the actual cookie design that we are going to be working with today. Um, what you're going to do is we're going to download that and we're going to unzip this file. And then here in a minute, when we are ready to press our puff final, we'll come back to the website and I'll show you where you can find that reference for um, all things puff vinyl. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna head back to Cricut and I'm going to actually just hide, let's just hide all of these. Um, unhide and hide. So cute. So hide all these. We're gonna go to upload. You're going to upload image. You could, here's where you can either drag and drop or browse. So I'm just gonna go to my downloads. I thought it unzipped. Uh, oh. It did not. Oh, there she goes. Maybe. So let's just do this. Let's pull down here, pull up our finder, and we're just going to drag and drop this here. We do want the PNG version. Um, so we are going to go to complex because we, this is, we want to make sure that we get all of the details. And we're going to go to continue. Now, here is where I need your attention. I need you to focus in because we're actually going to be using the background remover tool for this part. And you can see why, because when we zoom in, we want to get rid of this brown layer because we don't want to print that. That's going to be our puff vinyl. So what we're going to do is we're just going to, you can even zoom in as much as you want. You're going to make sure you're on the manual select tool. And then you're just going to come in here and select that brown layer and you see how it automatically goes away. Magic. So we're going to do that to, you can do it to all of the cookies or you can just do it to the cookies you want. Now, one thing, this specific cookie right here was hard for me to remove that because it it's doesn't so recognize similar. that pink and that, um, the pink and brown. Mm -hmm. So you can see here, like it just got rid of both and you can go back with the back arrows here. So see, I try to remove this little brown layer, but it removes both. So we're just going to remove the whole cookie because we just won't use it. Okay. So now we're just going to remove the outside, those background cookie pieces of all of these other ones. And you can technically remove just the ones you wanted to, right? Like if you saw three that you liked, you didn't do you see right. what I'm saying? You yes. don't have to do them to all. You don't have to do them to all. No, I don't think there's a way that you can hold shift and remove it all. It's individual select. That'd be a cool uh, little shortcut key, though. It would be, but I also, like, it would be hard, I feel like, to do that because on these PNGs, like, I've noticed, and you can see here, it oh, removed yeah. that bow as well. Oh, that one was cute, too. I know, I know. I like the ones that are bitten off of. That's your key. I know. I, I almost used, and we might use one of the ones that's bitten off of here in a minute. I think so this cute. was another one that I was having issue with just because this pink and brown. But if you really want to use it, what you can do is use the actual erase tool and like separate out. Now this would take, this is, this was going to take a little bit of like finagling, but you can like separate out this brown here. To where it's not touching the pink and then come back in with the select and select everything around it and then come in and erase and zoom in some more that's a good little hack though. move this erase tool down and oh that's way too small and that's a little big <laughs> and then just come in here and kind of like erase bev ask can you change the color of the cookie so changing the color of these predetermined PNG files, um, you can't because they are PNG. Now, if these were SVG files, you could, but like we were showing you earlier, we have a lot more than just this specific file as far as Christmas cookies. Now, this is one where I was able to remove the tan because it's it's like a different color tan. It's not as close to the other one. It must not be because yeah. it's very close. The pinks are very similar. 
but just a little darker maybe. But you cannot change the colors of these because they are PNGs. You can change the color of SVG files, just not PNG. Right, the SVGs are layered images, so they have like their individual layers. The PNGs are basically like flattened or what they call vectorized, so uh -huh. they're, they're like smushed together into one little image. Yes. So you can't like break them apart and color them. So now that we have removed the cookie backgrounds or the cookie pieces of the of this file we're going to hit apply and continue we do want to keep them print and cut images because they are going to be layered on top of our puff final then we are going to upload that into design space once we have done that we're going to select and add it to canvas it will come in pretty large which is great that's what we're wanting now you're just going to choose which cookie pieces you want. So Alicia, which ones do you think we should do? Do we think we should stick with the ones that we've done or do some new ones? Um, my votes are the Eaton one, uh -huh. the gingerbread one, and the Christmas wreath. Okay. So <laughs> what we're going to do, we're going to grab a shape. Okay. Now this is going to be this is one of those instances where I have found um, the slice function is still very useful. Actually, it's going to be the only thing that we can use mm -hmm. for this because I know there's been a lot of speculation about are they going to get rid of the slice function? Are they not going to get rid of the slice function because of the combined function? This is one instance where I don't think they can get rid of the slice function for this reason. Okay, yep. so you're going to grab your basic shape. And this is going to be a lesson on slicing and manipulating like PNG files really and truly. So once we have our shape, we're going to come to the cookies that we want and slice them away. Because you see here, we can't, it's all one cookie design. We can't come in here and select each individual one. And we want to be able to do that. So by getting our shape, and I will actually move it to the back so you can see it better. And we're gonna put that shape either in front of or behind the cookie piece that we want, okay? And then we're going to select both layers because like I said, that cookie design is one layer and our shape is one layer because you can only slice through two layers at a time. So once we have selected both layers, we're gonna come down here to the right corner and select slice. Now you're like, okay, what did that do? Well here, let me show you. We're gonna delete out that and now I can move this piece around by itself and these are all still together. He's a free cookie. He is a free cookie now. <laughs> so what we're gonna do, come back in here, grab another shape. Y'all, it really doesn't matter what shape you grab. You can work with any shapes. Um, I'll show you again. We'll send this one to back. Make sure that that is on top of that shape. Then we're going to select both layers. Um, we're going to go to slice. And now we have this cookie by itself as well. Now someone was asking about ungrouping. And the reason in this instance that you can't ungroup is what we were kind of talking about earlier about PNGs are basically on one layer. Yes. So SVGs, they're layered images and they typically come in, if there's different layers, you could ungroup the layers. But a PNG comes in as one flattened image uh -huh. all the colors are flattened you can't change the colors technically in design space you can't and so that doesn't allow us to ungroup anything it's one image okay so let's think about it this way let's go to one and let's think about it this way because i feel like sometimes we get confused but if we use it in terms that like more of like an everyday term we start understanding more or i find myself mm -hmm. when i when i take it and i compare it to something else i start understanding it a lot more so let's say we have, we're gonna say an SVG has five layers. So let's say we have five pieces of paper, okay? When we bring it in, or if I take it to Alicia, those five pieces of paper, I'm gonna hold it together mm -hmm. with a paper clip, okay? So I have those grouped together and held together with a paper clip, and I'm gonna take that to Alicia. That's my SVG, okay? Mm -hmm. A PNG is just one piece of paper. So there's nothing for it to paper clip it to. So right. that's why you can't ungroup it because it's just one piece of paper. So what we're doing is kind of taking some scissors and yes. cutting out 
each piece that we want. Does that make a little more sense? Preach on it. Preach on Preach it. Preach on it. So that's good. So you can come through and you can slice out or cut out each of these individual ones so you can move them and manipulate them around by themselves. Or like what we're doing, we're just picking the three that we want, the two, however many you want. We're just picking the ones that we want and slicing those out. And then you can hide all of these together. And then when you come back, if you want to create another one with different cookies on it, you can do that. Mm -hmm. Okay? So now we're just going to grab one more shape. This is a very rinse and repeat process. Do you think that that gingerbread's going to look good against that brown puff? Should we pick a different color? I think one? we should pick a different one just because I had that same thought or the, when I first yes. did it because I wanted to do the gingerbread on this one but didn't. Okay, pick a different one. Let's do Let's do this red one. I, was I think that. that would be really yeah. cute. So I'm going to arrange and move it to back just so you can see, but you don't have to arrange and move to back every time, okay? You don't have to. It still works the same if it's in front. So we're going to select both layers, okay? Um, and then we are going to slice that. And here we have our individual piece. Beautiful. Now, April says, so what if you go to a program and change a PNG to an SVG? That is something, if you know how to do that, more power to you. Then you yes. can change the colors. Yeah. Then you can. But for this project, we are just doing this. Like I said, we have lots of different cookie files that you can choose from on our website. This is just the ones that we are using today. So mm -hmm. now that we have our three cookies that we're using selected, I'm just going to hide this image because I no longer need it. And then I'm going to place my cookies and I think I might change my background color just because it's harder to see this little white right here. Let's change it to gray. So we're going to then bring our cookies in, place them where we want them, okay? And then what I like to do is grab them all, align them, and we're going to center them vertically. That means they're centered along this axis, okay? Actually, shouldn't that be centered Listen, horizontally? I'm just here to tell you that Cricut's had it backwards since I started using Design Space. And I always am like, that is backwards. That because is I'm completely backwards. Because I'm aligning them horizontally, but it wants, and you have to select vertically. Technically, it's doing it horizontally. You're doing it along, this is a horizon right here. Yes, yeah. No, I know, it drives along me Along this axis, it should be center horizontally. Along this axis, it should be center vertically. Yeah, it drives me crazy. I don't know what they're, I don't know what the thought process is. Huh. It all well, works. okay then. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so, what we're going to do now, we're going to bring our sweatshirt in. And y'all, I guess I should have, you know what I didn't do that I forgot? What? Go over all of our materials that we need today. That's okay. We can do it Which are very now. simple. Yeah. First of all, you need your sweatshirt. You need your puff final, whether it's Caesar, Tech Wrap, Starcraft, whatever. You need your puff final. And then you need some type of printable HTV. Today we are just using the Caesar Easy Color DTV because, first of all, we love it. We have a bunch of it. Mm -hmm. We have used other printable vinyls that have worked really well, but we have been really been loving the Caesar DTV. So that is the type of printable vinyl that we are using today. And then a heat source. And that's it. Um, Not too bad. Now, one thing that I do want to make sure you all know, when you are working with puff vinyl, you do need to have some type of heat source that you can apply pressure with because the pressure helps activate the puff. Um, you are not going to be able to use like a mini easy press on puff. That is one thing that I mm -hmm. don't think is possible because you do, whether you have an easy press or you have a heat press here, um, you are going to have to have pressure on that puff vinyl. Okay? So, um, back to, we're going to, we're measuring our sweatshirt. Where is the measuring tape? We normally have Here's one, one here. Perfect. Thanks. <laughs> Toss. <laughs> so what we're going to do now is we are going to measure our area to see what size we are, we can work with. Um, 
So sweatshirts, really and truly, as long as you have the vinyl that works, I think you could, we could go up to 12 inches if we wanted to. Um, we'll probably keep it around 11 for right now. So back in design space, you can see that currently we are sitting at about seven inches in width. So I'm just gonna come up here to the top while all three of these are selected. And I'm just gonna pop in, let's go 11 and a half. I think that'll be good. Yeah. Because, and the, the good thing about this is technically you don't have to, um, when you're printing these images, you don't have to have them grouped together because really and truly we could come in here and cut them out. And like you know what I'm saying? And manually place them. And manually place yeah. them because there's only three cookies. Right. And they're like solid images, right. not super detailed. Right. So we pumped, bumped it up to 11 and a half. And now while they're all three selected, I'm going to come over here to offset and I am going to put an offset onto our cookies. And you can see they're kind of close together right now because I do want a fairly large offset on this one. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come over here. I'm going to select, I love working with my layers panel because a lot of times I find myself clicking on an image on the canvas and then moving it and it's not where I want it to be anymore. Mm -hmm. So I love working from our layers panel on the right side. So I'm just going to select the lay, the um, red ornament over here on the right and I'm going to use my keyboard with my arrow keys and I'm just going to move it over just a little bit. Um, someone said, sad, I only have the mini press. And then Tina said, yes, you could use regular HTV instead of puff. This would be a great project to use like a tan colored regular HTV and you still get a very, very nice um, result with that. So I'm gonna move it over just a tad more and then I'm gonna select my center cookie and move it over a couple clicks. Now we're gonna select them all. We're looking at seven. 11 and 7. We'll bump it back down to 11 and a half just to be on the safe side. And then we're going to select our offset. Kelly, the slice option does work for all PNGs. You could slice a heart out of the middle of any PNG. Yes. You could slice a square out of any PNG image and do just the same as we did today. Yes. So back to offset. Mm. You think that's enough room? I think so. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't know, know when it puffs. I'd scooch it out just a little bit more. Okay, we'll scooch it out just a little bit more. We'll go three on this side. Oh no, see oh, what I that's mean? That's why we use the layers panel. That's why I use the layers panel. <laughs> and we'll do three, four on that side. Select them all. And then we're gonna go back to offset. That's a little better. Yeah. That's pretty good. I'm kind of far away, but it and looks apply. good. Yeah, yeah. That's good. Yeah, we're good. Okay. So now we are just going, I'm just going to change the color of this offset to brown just so I have an idea of how I want it. And I'm going to make sure this offset, make sure this offset is a basic cut. Okay. You have to make sure you change your offset to basic cut. Now, once we have done all of that, we're ready to make it, y'all. Mm -hmm. Ready to make it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to make it. You can see that our, and we're gonna move this guy over to this page because we have plenty of room. Cricut tries to do this to me every single time. I know, why would it even do that? That's plenty of space. There's plenty, plenty. of room. Plenty of room. So we're going to make sure these are all three on the same page. Once again, remember you do not have to have um, you you don't have to have these in order because I like to like manually place them. Now, if you don't want to place them by hand, you can actually use um, heat transfer transfer tape. Um, but these were very easy to just place down by hand, yeah. not a problem. So we are going to make sure that these. Are going to cut once again for printable vinyl you do not have to mirror it okay let me say that again 
For printable vinyl, you do not have to mirror it because we're going to print it out and then it will be laid down on our uh, shirt. Virtually like a sticker. Yes. That you like apply heat to. Yeah. Yes. Now, this does have to be mirrored. Mm -hmm. Okay? This piece we do have to mirror because we are cutting it on puff vinyl and it is going to be have to be mirrored. Um, do you care to run and grab me a 12 by 24 inch mat if I you don't care? Will. And while you do that, grab the um, heat transfer transfer tape just in case. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and continue with this. We're going to send this one to our printer. We are using our Canon TS9500 series. Um, for this, I am going to add the bleed just because I don't want any white showing around it. And we are going to use our system dialog, okay? From there, we're going to print it. Ours always pulls up behind there. We're gonna make sure it is on best quality and we are feeding from the rear tray just because that's where it is. And we are going to hit print. Why would you mirror anything without a word? Um, I w mirroring that because I want it to be on the correct side. Like I want it to be in the order that I put it. So if I didn't mirror it, it's going to be the opposite of the way that I put it in Design Space. So in Design Space, I had the um, the wreath, the cookie, and then the ornament. If I didn't mirror it, it would be the ornament, cookie, and then the wreath. Let's talk about this puff vinyl because this is when Alicia and I started using the term carrier, carrier sheet, sheet down instead of shiny side down. Mm -hmm. So if we go overhead, you can clearly see that there is shiny side here, matte side here. So naturally, if you are working with HTV, I would put shiny side down. Am I right? Like, yes. would you all not do the same thing? Yes. Exactly. We would all do the same thing. However, if you look at this, let me grab this corner. The carrier sheet on this is the mat side. Okay, do you all see this? So the mat side is the carrier sheet. So it needs to be matte side down, okay? So we're putting, and this is just, this is why it is very important, depending on what brand of puff vinyl you use, that you reference our puff vinyl reference sheet. So let's go back to our share screen, and let's go to our, first of all, I'm gonna show you where you can find your references on your Makers Gonna Learn, on the Makers Gonna Learn website. So when you go to your dashboard, what you're gonna do is you are going to go to your resources, okay? And here we have a Puff Vinyl reference sheet. So looking at this, at the bottom you see always cut with the carrier sheet facing down and you press with the carrier sheet facing up, okay? Because I'm pretty sure Tech Wraps was shiny side mm -hmm. was the carrier sheet. Yes. And the dull side was the actual vinyl. Mm -hmm. And then Starcrafts was even different than that. Yeah, so you just need to check whichever vinyl yes. unit purchasing. That's why that reference guide says carrier sheet facing down because it could be shiny or it could be matte. Right. So you just have to kind of peel the corner back and check it whenever you receive it. We are using Caesar today, right? Caesar mm -hmm. puff. So this one and actually it's not has sticking at all. Oh, okay. Let me. Get, I have another because mat. of this mat carrier yes, sheet. Yeah, I have sticking. another twenty-four inch mat. Hold on. Yes. Hold the phone, people. So a lot of times, so we did have Kelly ask. So do you test that every time? If you know what brand of vinyl you have, you don't have to test it every time, but if you are working with a new brand of vinyl, yes, I highly suggest you test it to see what side is the carrier sheet. And I'm gonna use an example. We actually volunteered at an event a couple, maybe like a month or so ago, and we used HTV Ront vinyl, um, and some of those vinyls had 
matte carrier sheets. Some of them had shiny carrier sheets and knowing the difference was super hard. So we got mixed up and used it like backwards, backwards so many times. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Happens, so we are taping down our puff vinyl because it's not sticking to our mat. And I truly think that it is because of the um, carrier sheet. So I'm just making sure that it stays on our mat here. Carol is, just said, is anyone having trouble with printing? Cuts? I was just talking about that. Oh, were you? Yes. I had issues with it on Friday, but we were using glossy paper. Well, she said that she called Cricut and that they said that it was, um, said it was something that they were having trouble with and it wasn't her machine. Oh, okay. So I wonder if it was an issue just like with Cricut in general. I know, I wonder too. Load this into our machine. And while that is cutting, we're going to reference back to our puff vinyl. We're gonna look at our heat settings and you can see here that we are needing our heat press set at 280 degrees. So we're gonna play this, get that started. And then I'm gonna come over here and bring my temperature down because the puff vinyl, you are working with puff vinyl at a lower heat setting. Okay, so now I'm going to take my true control knife. Let's move this. Let's get this table a little more uh, nice looking so you guys can see how we, that's really how we truly work if we're being honest. Yeah, the craft room right now is I something mean, it's, else. <laughs> it's been worse, but. It's not in, in its best shape. And I even cleaned for like, I don't know, 30 minutes. I cleaned my desk off this morning, and it's just right back at it. Kay. When we're in the middle of doing stuff, like working on courses and stuff, it gets crazy in here. The film room is packed full. Uh -huh. It's just a mess. This is the reason that I really don't like working with uh, actual hooded yes. sweatshirts and a clamshell heat press. But it's okay. We'll make it work. Yeah. Okay. So now that I've got that on there, let's cut this off and then we will weed it and put our other on this. We'll just use it on this mat. It's all good. You don't have to have, a, if it's 12 by 12, 12 by 24. Kim's asking why, and I'm going to miss you saying this, why did you put it on a long mat? Because the um, I put it on a long mat because it was actually right at, it was a little over like the, so if you are only using a 12 by 12 inch mat, then you need to make sure your offset, offset and everything else that you are creating is under 11 and a half inches. This one was just over 11 and a half inches by like just a hair. Barely, yeah. And really and truly, I just was lazy and didn't want to go back in there and resize it. Yeah. But really, if you wanted, if you only had a 12 by 12, you could just resize it in design space yes. so that you, even with your offset, everything was under 11 and a half inches. Yes. So the short answer, why did I use it smart? Because I was lazy and didn't want to change the size. Yeah. Short answer. <laughs> but you can. <laughs> but you if can. You <laughs> Absolutely. One thing about this puff vinyl is the carrier sheet is pretty thick. Yes. So it's sometimes hard to like cut through this carrier sheet, I have noticed. Did it cut the it cut the vinyl good? Yeah. Cut the vinyl good. great. Okay. I love weeding puff vinyl. It weeds. It weeds like a dream. Yeah, and it where it's thicker, it just I don't know, it just feels good. It weeds better. I mean look at that. Would you beautiful. just look at it? Beautiful. I love the little eaten cookies, my favorite. So cute. We're gonna take this uh, masking tape off the bottom here as well, just so we don't miss that. Okay, now that that is weeded and done, um, Alicia made a really, really good comment, and that is to show you all um, 
Here you can see a really good representation of why we want to add bleed because when we do our print and cut, we want to make sure our Cricut cuts where there is literally no white showing, okay? This is one we don't want white showing because we don't have a white offset. So if there was a white offset here, we wouldn't need to add the bleed. But this is one where we have color, we don't want to see white on the edges, so we do add the bleed, okay? Then when, if our printing cut is not perfect, it won't show as badly because we have a little layer of cushion around the image. And I'm just going to use this 12 by 24 mat because it's what I have sitting here. And we are going to cut this on, we're going to browse all material, and we're going to cut this on printable vinyl. Sorry, y'all, I'm trying to move my stuff out of the way. Let's do printable iron on light. Okay, y'all, we're going to try one more thing real quick. See if this works. Although it shouldn't because these black marks are, are matte. Are very, very dark. And matte already. And matte. Um, We're going over them with a Sharpie to tomorrow. see if it's any better. We're going to try and maybe yeah. it's the mat. I'll put it on this mat, but I don't think that's the case. Uh, I've got a bad feeling. I hope that it works, though. I'm going to send good juju. Now, back here. Um... Browse all material. We're going to go back to printable vinyl. Okay, it says it's done cutting. All right. It did. It cut it. So weird. I Yay. guess the Sharpie hack really works. Sharp, y'all saw it here first. The Sharpie <laughs> hack really works. So now I'm just going to peel up. Oh, didn't cut all the way through. Ooh. Did it mostly cut? Mostly. Ugh. Come on now. Come on now. Come on with it. So, it's a good thing that I turned the bleed on because I don't know if it is a cricket issue with print and cut. I know you all were saying that you all were having issues as well. But if I would not have had the bleed on, there would have been like so much white showing. Mm -hmm. Because it's cut around the bleed. Oh. Like, and you can see the bleed. It's not terrible, but yeah. anyway. We got at it. least At least it gave us time for our heat press to cool down. Yeah. So that's perfect. A gift. Perfect. So what we're going to do now is we're going to press our puff vinyl first. Now, I have this upside down. So we're going to make sure, I'm going to turn this around so I make sure that I get it right because I want to work on it from this side. So we're going to place our puff vinyl where we want it. This is a really good... Normally we have one in here, our t-shirt guide. If we don't, don't worry about getting up. We'll just go with it. We're going with our heart. You do three finger widths. Yep. Oh, that's a little, little much. It's okay. I think I, I did. I feel like we're pretty good at eyeballing. Yeah. But if you're not good at eyeballing, yes, you, Diane, you would have to calibrate your machine. If you're not good at eyeballing, then this is a good place for your t-shirt ruler to come out. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we are going to press this. 280 degrees for on the guide it says 15 seconds i'm only pressing this for seven and i'll tell you why or really and truly you can press it just until it has enough um puff puff to it because you're gonna have to press it again and you don't want the puff vinyl to be overworked okay so we're only gonna press this for 
a few seconds because it really doesn't take long for it to act kind of like activate and stick to your hoodie so we're pressing this about a medium pressure we'll do four five seconds okay you can see it's already puffed little okay? cookies the cookies are already puffed the color is so close to looking like an actual cookie i know <laughs> so now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to come in here and place my Caesar DTV down. And one really good thing about this project is you don't have to be perfect with where you place these, um, where you place like the icing. Adds I mean, character. Which it's pretty dang close. But this is where if you're not comfortable if, or if you're working with a design that is not easily like picked up, mm -hmm. that is where you're going to use, it's actually like Caesar, it's like DTV or it's like a heat transfer transfer tape. Yes. With printable vinyl, you are going to have to have a, um, if you're working with very intricate detail things, you are going to need um, heat transfer transfer tape. But this one, you don't, for this specific design, you don't have to. So we're just going to place these down where they go. I'm going to take this sheet and cover them back up and make sure that my all of my puff vinyl is covered back up so don't throw that carrier sheet away, okay? And then we're going to press it. We're going to keep it on 280 because once again, we don't want the um, we don't want the puff vinyl to be overworked, so we don't need it at a higher temperature. And the DTV actually will adhere at a lower temperature, so we're going to press it for another like 15 seconds. So we had a couple questions. Someone okay. asked, "How much is the annual membership?" And it comes out to 16.25 a month. If you were just doing the normal monthly, it would be 27 dollars a month. Um, typically, we do have a monthly special right now that's half off of the monthly, which makes it like thirteen fifty. So that's kind of nice. But if you do yearly, it's much less. So look how cute that looks. Cute. Look how cute. I love our cookie choices. I love the cookie choices. Oh, so y'all, like, how easy was that? If we didn't have to what I used to put over this, like when I pressed it the second time, mm -hmm. was I just used what we call the carrier sheet from the puff vinyl. Yes. So I just kind of laid it over top of all of it. We like to use our resources around here. Oh, for sure. Like if I don't have to use mm -hmm. the heat transfer transfer tape, I'm not going to waste it. That's yes. why using that, because it was still sticky, mm -hmm. like really and truly, you could have probably taken that and cut it into little pieces and like picked those up and laid them down individually with yeah. that, with the um, carrier sheet from the puff vinyl. That's very true. Crafting, I feel like, I is all it. about using the resources you have. Mm -hmm. Being crafty, period. Being, being crafty, period, means you come up with ways to save money. You come up with ways mm -hmm. to do things yourself. So It's not a hobby. It's a lifestyle. It really is. <laughs> it's put that on a t-shirt. <laughs> Crafting, dot, dot, dot. It's not a hobby. It's a lifestyle. <laughs> Seriously. Really. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. And y'all, this card, I know you all are going to love this. I know we know our friends here at Makers Going to Learn love stained glass. Now, this is like, this is new. It's a trend, if you will. Um, and honestly, kind of a hack, what we're going to show you. So we're going to be printing f new images. These images were just put on the site today. I think there's 10. Um, there should be, yeah, well, there's six on the site right now. So these are all new Christmas images. If you are a maker, it's gonna learn member, you're already gonna have access to these today. If you sign up for membership, you're gonna immediately get access to them as well. Um, and so this is the card we're gonna be card. making. This is from far away, but I'm about to give you guys a close up shot and Sadie's gonna put us overhead. Um, I can, love this. Look how beautiful. This is so, this looks like I bought it from somewhere. Honestly, it's giving Bible bookstore. Oh, I'm like loving it. Like the quality, it just seems like a gift I could purchase there. Yes. So basically what we're gonna be doing is taking some of these new images, one of these new images, and we're gonna be adding this as a stack and it just gives it this like really beautiful 
extra dimension, which I love so much. And we're going to be putting this white on the inside so you can actually write on the card. So these are going to be beautiful for Christmas cards. If you love, I know lots of our members love making Christmas cards. Y'all, is this not the prettiest ever? Uh, I actually am like dying over this card right now. It, this is my favorite. I love it. So let's go to the share screen. And I'm going to show you all the six images that you have to choose from today. We are giving options. We have options. And I won't say that you have to do it with these images. Um, but, but we added them this week for you. They're brand new. We literally <laughs> put them in for you to develop, use. The team worked very hard to develop these yes. just for you. And like the quality of these, can y'all... If you know we're talking about updating that sublimation course, this is the this is the quality. Okay, yeah, this is just a good. little taste of what you're going to be seeing inside there. And this is not the sublimation course. These are member uh, member files like, yeah. for you all to use. So we're going to be using the reindeer stained glass. I also am obsessed with these red poppies. These are going to be perfect for Christmas. I'm just I'm just in love. I can see you all saying so beautiful. That's gorgeous. Oh my gosh. So I'm really excited. I'm going to go ahead and click on this and let's go ahead and download our image while we are on the website. So I'm just going to select download here. It's going to pop into a zip folder and we can double click that to open it up. This is a PNG image. So it's a printable network graphic, which is a printable image typically used for print and cut and things like that. And then we'll go over to Cricut. Well, let me hop off of all of this. We have been filming all day today, y'all. Yes. We have been busy, busy. We're working on something new for y'all. Yes. Ooh. Ooh. Oh my gosh. I like keep forgetting that you all don't know what we've been <laughs> working on. <laughs> so I'm glad I keep my big mouth shut. <laughs> okay. Love it. I'm gonna go to my stuff. We've already got um like we've already got a a file ready for this. So you all can see all the pieces before we actually go in and create everything. But we're literally using basic shapes for this. So you need the image and you need a square, pretty much. So these are all of the elements that we are gonna be needing today. Now, the first thing we're gonna do, I'm just gonna go ahead and upload that image so we don't forget. Just go to your uploads over here on the left, select upload image, and then you can go to your finder and you can see it's still highlighted. If for some reason you can't find it, always check your downloads and then you can click and drag it into design space. I always select complex, continue, apply and continue. And then we're gonna be using the print and cut image and we're gonna upload it, okay? And then Do we know if there's a nativity scene? We need to add <gasps> one. Um, put it on the list. It on we the list. definitely should do a nativity scene. That would look good on this card too. I love that. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to add that to my canvas so you can see we've got it here. I'm just going to move these elements over so they're out of our way and so no one gets confused on what they need and what they don't need. Okay, so we've got our beautiful deer right here. Now what I'm going to need to do is create our card. So I need to know the size of the base of my card. And we're going to be making a 10 by 5 card. This is going to basically create a perfectly square 5 by 5 card once it's folded down the middle. So I'm just pulling in a basic square. I can unlock my shape up here. And that way, whenever I put my width in, it doesn't mirror it in the height box. It'll actually allow me to make my width whatever, width whatever I want and my height whatever I want. So we're going to do 10 by 5. Okay. And I'm going to make this like a light gray just so we can see it better. Okay, and then I need to add in a score line. So the score line is where our card is going to fold right down the middle. If you go to shapes, you can see there's a line up here right in the top left. And while it's selected, I'm going to actually change the height to five because that's as tall as our card. Okay, and then I'm going to click and drag. I'm going to select that rectangle as well as that line. And we're going to go to a line center and that's going to put it right in the middle of our card. Now, I need to make sure to attach that line to my card or it's not going to know where to cut when we go to make it. So I'm just going to select both of the layers and hit attach. So now this is just one, basically one image. My line is attached to my square. So whenever 
we run this through the Cricut, it's going to cut our square out and it's going to score that line at the middle. Does that make sense to everybody? Yes. And if you want to, you can always make sure that your operation on your line is set to score. Sometimes it's set to cut. So we want to make sure we're scoring and not cutting because we don't want to cut our card in half. That would not be good. Now we've got a 10 by 5 rectangle here. This is the base of our card. We're going to be designing only on half of the card. Since it's a 10 inch wide card, I'm going to be designing on a 5 inch square. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a square for the inside of our card. We're just going to go ahead and get that out of the way. I'm going to make it slightly smaller than 5 by 5. Now you could manually go in here and do it this way, but I like to be a little bit more precise than that. I'm going to make this exactly 4.75, so we have exactly a quarter inch all the way around our image. And it's going to look a lot better whenever you all are creating this. If you were making perfect squares, right? I can't tell you enough how much it would bother me if that was like 4.374. <laughs> like, I can't do it. So this is going to have a quarter inch allowance. This is going to be inside of our card. So I'm going to set it to the side. We're going to be cutting it out of white so that you can actually write whatever you want on the inside of your card. Beautiful, right? Yes. Okay. Now, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and work with our image here. So our first layer, we're going to have three layers of our reindeer, okay? Our first layer is going right here on the outside of our card. We're going to make this one 4.75 as well make sure your image is locked, okay? I want this to be proportional, and so automatically it'll change my height to 4.164. Let's bring it to the front, arrange, bring to front. You can see here, it's gonna fit just like that, okay? Actually, scratch what I just said. I hope I didn't confuse you all. No, you're good. I don't wanna resize that yet. I don't wanna resize that yet. Ignore what I said. So we're not going to do the reindeer yet. We're not going to do the reindeer. We're going to work on our little black squares out here that our reindeers are going to sit on. So I don't want to confuse you all. What I'm going to do next is create another square. Now this one is going to be basically our second layer on our design. So this is going to be, let's do 4.25. Actually, let's see what we did before. Okay. So we did four inches. So we've got a five inch square here. Our next square is gonna be an inch smaller. We're gonna make it four inches. Okay, so you can see here, we're starting to create this little stacked area. And then I'm gonna need one more square that is three inches. So I'm just duplicating it and changing it to three. Okay, so these are our black squares. Let's go overhead and let me show you all what I'm talking about when I say that. It's so, really good to see the visual. Right. So in design space, we have our five by five. Okay. Our second square is this one right here. This is our four inch square and this is our three inch square. Good? Love it. Everybody good. Okay. I'm going to pull these down here. And then what we're going to do <clears throat> next is create these squares right here. Now these are the ones that are going to be our reindeer images. So we're going to need to create three different boxes that are three different sizes. So I'm going to go ahead, go grab my square shape again. Like I said, we're pretty much just using squares for this. I'm going to make one that is 4.75. Okay. Uh, Kristen says, so I guess you could do as many layers as you, you want. You technically could. Yeah, you, you and could. You just have to be really precise when you're lining them up. And we're using foam squares today. Yes. So remember, every layer, it's getting, you know, that three-dimensional look. So personally, I wouldn't do more than, you know, we're doing what, four? Mm -hmm. four, four technical layers, three well, layers of foam. Right, right. You know, so there's that bottom one that doesn't have any. I mean, so. you could get crazy. If you guys do more than the, than the layers that we're doing today, I yeah. need to see a picture. Yeah, I want to see what they look Put like. Put it in the Facebook group. <laughs> so I've got a 4.75 square here. I'm just going to duplicate. We're going to take it down to 3.75. Love it. And then we're going to duplicate and do it one more time. 
Yes. Okay, so you, are you guys kind of seeing what we're doing here? We're just making our layers. We're staggering our layers. So they're all just basically a quarter inch smaller on every single layer, which is going to create that like stacked effect. That's what we're going for. Love it. Okay. <clears throat> so now we have our image here. I'm going to shrink this down to a little bit bigger than our square. So than this square. So I made it like five and a half. And what we're going to need to do next is pull our square on top of our image. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and duplicate our reindeer image two more times because we're going to be slicing this out three times. So once per square. So we've got our first big square right over top of our image. I'm going to select both of these. Before we cut anything, I want to align this perfectly center. Okay, so I'm just selecting both of the layers, go up to the align function and hit center. Love okay, it. and then you're going to need to slice it out. So you can see that this image is not a perfect square, but we are making it into one by slicing the square out of it. And so I'm just going to delete any portions of the image that I don't need. So here's our first one. Okay. Awesome. I'm going to bring this square to the front just so you all can see what's going on here. I'm going to put it in front of here. I'm going to select the reindeer, our smaller square. We're going to align, center, and then we're going to slice. Again, deleting any layers that we do not need. Okay. And then we're going to bring this one to the front, put it in the middle, select both layers, align, center, and slice. All right. Are y'all with me? Yep. So we've got all three of our images. We did not resize our image at all. I want to be very clear about that. We're not resizing any of our pictures. Like when I first was doing this in my brain, I was like, Oh, just like shrink it down a little bit, shrink it down a little bit, but we're not resizing the picture. Right. And that's what gives it that three dimensional effect whenever we actually attach it to the card. So now let's go back overhead and make sure that we have all of the layers. So we created our rectangle. Okay. We created that. We put our score line in and then we created our inside white area. This is so you can write on your card. And then we created our black squares here, as well as our image layers. And that's all you need. That's it. Wow. So everything's here and good to go. I am going to group and hide all of this old stuff just so it's off of the or off of the canvas. Right. But this is everything that y'all are going to need. Now, let me show you what supplies you're going to actually need to complete the card. So we have all of our elements. We double check that we've got everything. If you are an experienced crafter and you wanted to use some of our sketch fonts to add on some writing onto this, you totally can do that and do sketch fonts on this instead of using your own handwriting. Um, but we're just going to leave it open. That way we can put whatever we want whenever we want. So, and also this doesn't have to be Christmas. This is giving like just really pretty greeting card. Yeah. Like you don't have to do Christmas. So we're going to go ahead and make it and you can see all of our reindeers are going to be print then cut images and I've got all of my other layers over here. Now let's go overhead. So normally if you all were creating this and you were printing those beautiful reindeer images or any of the other options, you are going to print on glossy cardstock. Okay. We've linked some for you all to use. But we literally, we like jumped on this trend immediately. We're like, we have to do it in the live stream tomorrow. So um, we're using printable vinyl. So a little hack. Um, but you want it to be glossy. And y'all know we ride that matte train. We love the matte, everything. Yeah. But for this project, I want to encourage you all to use glossy cardstock. Or if you've only got printable glossy vinyl on hand, that's actually going to work perfectly as well. So we're using this HTV Ront glossy printable vinyl. I've got a scoring stylus, so you can use this if you have an Explore or a Maker Series. It just fits in the other clamp. I have a brayer. I've got black cardstock as well as some white cardstock. This is just like standard medium weight cardstock. I have an ATG gun, some foam squares. You can get these at the dollar store, Hobby Lobby, Walmart, all the above. And then I have a well-loved standard grip mat. You probably want to use 
a light grip mat. You can use a well-loved standard grip mat when you're doing paper projects. I would not suggest using a brand new standard grip mat. If you are working with paper, it will tear it will yeah. tear your cardstock. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, so we don't want to do that. Um, but that's it. So back in Design Space, all we're going to need to do is just follow the prompts on the Cricut Design Space. So right now it's wanting me to just select continue and it's going to have me print out my print then cut images first. Sherry, you can use photo paper instead for sure, totally. So I'm going to send this to my printer. Now, this is something that we cultivate here at Makers Gonna Learn is printing from the dialog box. We all do it. It's just better because you can get that best quality. Normally, if I just printed this, it's gonna print okay, but it's not gonna be the best and we all want it to be the best. So I've got my printer set. We're using a TS9500. This is an inkjet Canon printer we love. I'm also keeping my bleed on for this image. And the reason that I'm doing that is because I want to make sure that I'm getting full color to the all the way to the ends of my image. I need that color, like I don't want any white showing on this card. So I'm going to keep my bleed on. I'm going to use my system dialog and then select print. Now, if you're using a Mac, it's going to pop up behind Design Space. If you're using a Windows, it should just pop up your dialog box. But sometimes we got to scooch it down. And so. I've got my printer selected over here, make sure it's all matching up. I'm gonna feed from the rear tray because this paper is a little bit thicker than normal copy paper. And I'm gonna select best quality and then we can print. And so I'm gonna go grab that really fast. Yay! All right. Okay. Alicia's got it printed out. It looks so pretty. Yay! It took a little longer because it's so detailed, but look how look at the quality of that. You can't beat it. it. I love it. Okay, so we've got that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put this on our mat at the top left corner, lining this up as straight as I can, especially for print and cuts. And I'm gonna use my brayer. Now, I do not recommend using a burnishing tool, especially on printed images like this. Sometimes you'll get scratching through the ink, especially. Um, you don't always get that if you're not really aggressive with it, or if you've got those burnishing tools that have like the, the uh, felt wrapped around one side of them, you can use those. But I always recommend brayer or the felt wrapped burnishing tool versus just a straight up plastic burnishing tool because it just doesn't always work good. And so I'm going to browse all materials in design space. We're going to cut this on printable vinyl. And let's see here. Or I'm sorry, we have printable vinyl. We could do printable sticker paper or printable vinyl. Either way is going to work. I'm going to do printable vinyl. Okay, and then we're going to select done. And then we can go ahead and load this into our Cricut. Okay, and we are using the Explore 3 today. I love this machine. We were talking Me about too. the machines that we loved the other day. The Maker is my number one favorite, but the Explore 3 works really good too. Yeah, I it's love awesome. It. it is so good. The machine can't read the sensor marks. Okay, y'all, this happens a lot with glossy vinyl. Yes. And it is bright in here, and that's probably why. So we're going to turn off all our lights and try again. <laughs> I'm totally kidding. <laughs> yeah, it would be really weird. But, you know, what we can do sometimes, depending on who you are, sometimes I will just shade it like this, and that is enough. So I'm going to try that here and see if we can get a better read. It's like the glossy vinyl hits that light and it can't get those registration marks. So I'm just gonna hold a shade over it. As silly as that sounds, it works. I'm excited to see how well it does. <laughs> well, we'll let it go. Maybe she's trying to feed. Hold on, it didn't feed in very great. I'm gonna... Sue asked, if I print it on photo paper, what setting do I need to use? There is a photo paper setting. So just be sure to you know use that. I know photo paper can sometimes be super super thick so just be mindful of that um and things should and if work. you're if you're not feeling confident that's going to cut through you can always add more pressure okay too. Christine, Kristen says she puts her top part down of the machine and like clicks it click it okay click it okay i don't know why i haven't ever done that, that could work in my brain it would like not let the machine work but like yeah. duh okay she said lid down is her way to do it I don't know. I don't feel like You're it's... Like, I, don't. <laughs> I mean, it's definitely shading like the back. Let's try it and see if that works because that's a really fun hack, actually. Yeah. 
I love that. See, learning something new, always people. Always learning. Always, always learning. Okay, so it's going to just try and scan all of those. Okay, so it didn't read it again. Oh, oh, it didn't. I thought it did we were, not. No. Oh, we were celebrating. <laughs> Sorry. No. I misread. It's okay, though. I'm going to go ahead and pull this off very carefully. I don't want to warp my paper, so I'm going to try to go with gravity. I'm going to set this to the side for two seconds, and I'll go get a paper trimmer, and I'm going to go ahead and start cutting out the other pieces of cardstock. So... In Design Space, it's wanting us to cut out our white square. I'm going to use medium cardstock for that. So we're just going to line this up just like so. And then we can load this into our Cricut. Okay. <laughs> and then I've got my paper trimmer here. While that cuts our white cardstock, we can go ahead and trim up our little deers. Now I could go in here and hand cut this if I was feeling wild and crazy, but I'm not. I'm not gonna do that. I know it stresses y'all out when I freehand stuff like that. I won't do it to you today. Okay, so we're gonna start with our first little guy. This Westcott paper trimmer is like, honestly, one of the best ones for your dollar. It's, it's so such a good precise cutter for an affordable price. I'm trying to line it up perfectly. Well, remember you have that extra- um, The bleed. Bleed, so yeah, you're totally good. That's very true. I'm actually gonna cut it out, like cut each piece out with scissors and then go in with a precise cut because they're all staggered Smart, and it's right. like weird, but I don't want to try to cut it straight myself. It will not be good, y'all. I am not gonna even play. <laughs> I just can't cut a straight line if I wanted to. I hear you. I hear you. There's two different types of people out there. Okay. So now we can trim these up a little bit easier. And our white cut perfectly. I can see them sitting over there ready to go. Yay. Okay. So Tanner was saying since we have that bleed, we do have a little bit of leeway when we're cutting this with the cutter versus the Cricut because it bled over the actual size, if that makes sense. And if there is any white left over, you can always go back with scissors and just kind of trim it off. Okay. There All we right. go. We are Not in just love action. these images, guys. Like these images are gonna be so good and we've already sent a little note over to our team about some of the ideas that you guys have gave us in the comments. Oh. So again, thank you, thank you, thank you for that as well. What other ideas are people coming up oh, with? Oh, there's so many. We oh. Have, um, oh, we do have a red cardinal. Um, oh, yes. And we are adding it. So we actually had one and Courtney just let the team know. I mean, look how beautiful this is. We little, would not, we have to have cardinal. a red cardinal. Yeah. Ooh, that's so it. pretty. So much fun, so, so much fun. Um, so yeah, we're adding all of them and having some more. Oh, we already have a nativity scene that we just hadn't got on the site. So oh. quite a few. Thank you guys for all these ideas. I know there's some other ones for um, different holidays that we are also requesting um, for Hanukkah, uh, like a Hanukkah scene as well. So yay, super, super fun. Lots of good stuff coming in. Yes. Okay. And again, down below what we have done to make it easy for you, we've linked the exact cut file we've used. If you want to see where all of these cut balls are, just search stained glass on the website. They should pop up. So there mm -hmm. should be close to eight to ten right now. Um, and then all the supplies we used is linked down below. Yes. And they should all be together when y'all search stained glass too. Yep. Which is really nice. Okay. So we have our three images. Okay. I'm just going to get rid of all this extra. And our white squares out. I have a piece of sticker vinyl that will not leave me. Okay. <laughs> It didn't want to detach. So here's our white square. I'm going to flip this over and gently remove it from our mat so that we don't bend our paper. And I can use this white another day because we only needed just that corner. Okay. And then back in design space, they're wanting us to cut our card as well as one of our squares. 
Now what's happened here is I've chosen the wrong two separate grays. And so I want to cut these all out of black. So what I'm going to do is click on one of these mats. I can edit this. Oops. We're going to have to go back one. I'm going to hit cancel. Yes. I can actually move these on to the other mat from this screen. That's so cool. What a hack. Yes, we love that. So I can just bump it over here. Make sure you're moving it off of that card. We don't want it to cut out of the card. And then we can even move this one here. Now, if you change them all to the same color on your canvas, it would have automatically put them on the same mat, but I did not. They were just two separate shades of gray. And so now this is all going to cut out of our black cardstock. I can select continue and we're going to cut this on a medium cardstock cut setting. So just right there, and we're gonna put this on our mat, break it down really good. Amazing. Amazing. And then it's also prompting me to load my scoring stylus. So I've got her right here, and she's gonna go in this clamp. We can keep our fine point blade in the first clamp. What I love about the stylus is that versus the adaptive tool, I should say, is the adaptive tool fits in the same slot as the fine point blade. So when I'm using the stylus, I'm gonna have the option to have both of them in the machine at the same time, rather than having to swap them out. So it's kind of handy because you can do both jobs simultaneously. Yeah. Okay, we're getting our pieces together. Anytime I'm making card crafts, I have piles. Yeah. So I'll have like all my white stuff in a pile, all my colored stuff in a pile. I want to know in the comments. Yes, I love I love paper crafting. I didn't even become a paper crafter until, I mean, I had done some, but as far as using like a Cricut until I worked here, I didn't do as many. And now I'm like obsessed. I love paper crafting. It's one of my favorite things to do. Yeah. So I'm removing all this excess. Okay, and then we're just going to take our card off all of our pieces. Be careful when you're doing this. I see a lot of people saying their mats are breaking. Don't, don't bend it till it's crispy on the edges. Yes. We just want to like warp it a little bit, you know, so it kind of, <laughs> cause it'll pop off. The paper will kind of pop off and then you have to do the rest of the work. I love it. So, okay. All of our stuff's here. I don't know that you all can see this, but there is a score line on our card. Beautiful. And so whenever we go to fold it, it's just going to be so nice and crispy. I didn't bring our bone folder in here, but normally what I would do is take a bone folder or you can use a credit card or a squeegee and press that edge down really good. So look how crispy that is. I love that. I'm going to go ahead and attach our inside. I'm going to use an ATG gun. So this is just double sided adhesive in here. And I'm just going to basically go all the way around this and then we're going to attach it to the inside of the card and put as much ATG as your heart desires. Now you could write in here with like a gel pen and it would show up and it would probably be really pretty. Okay, so we've got all of the pieces and what we're gonna be doing is attaching them to the square. So I'm just gonna basically if you look at this one, I'm gonna start from the back. And a lot of times in paper crafting, I start from the back and work up, if that makes sense. Tanner, do you know what I'm saying? I kind of work backwards a lot when I paper craft. And you don't have to do it that way, but in my brain, it works better for me. So like, I'm gonna start from the back of that and attach our first guy. I think that's very common. I think okay, yeah, okay, I think good. that's totally normal. Okay, good. I think that's how every paper crafter should. And yes. yeah, you wanna start at the bottom layer and just build up. I feel like in sewing, like if you're a sewer, they also do a lot of backwards. Yeah. It's like you have to deconstruct it before you build it back up again. Mm, I see what you're saying. Now, so we're using printable vinyl. So this actually is sticky adhesive on the back. If you're using glossy, uh, like glossy cardstock or photo paper, I would recommend using the ATG. I would not recommend going in with like glue. Um, there's certain glues you could use, but sometimes if you get a lot of glue on here, it starts to warp your paper and your image. So you have to be very careful. The double-sided adhesive really is going to be your best bet. Now I'm going to try to get this on here as straight as I can. So I'm just going to fold that backer. I'm just folding it barely, barely. And what I'm going to do 
is place it on here as square as my little eyeballs can, okay? Yeah. And so we have a little bit of a lip, remember, because this is like an offset. And I'm gonna flatten that top edge down. So you can see this is still flap, flapping. And so I'm gonna pull that backer off. And as I pull it off, I'm gonna take this squeegee and I'm gonna flatten it as I go. And be careful, like I was saying earlier, you don't wanna scratch your image using the squeegee. Just be mindful. Okay. That went on a lot straighter than I thought it was going to. Yay. Okay, and now I'm going to attach my other one doing a similar technique. Once it gets so small, it really is kind of easy just to eyeball it and put the whole sticker on there yourself. But this size, I think we could do the same method. Okay. Oop. Don't want it to move. Do you have any tips for cutting intricate designs? When you're cutting intricate designs, you need to have, that's like number one like failure is you don't have the proper blade. Yes. And you're not using the proper material, all right? So you want to be, for an intricate design, if we're talking about paper, you're gonna want to be in the realm of 65 to 80 pound cardstock. The reason why, if you're trying to be intricate with a fine point blade and you go to a hundred pound cardstock, things like that, it is not allowing the same precision. All right, vinyl is another story. It would mm -hmm. be totally fine to do intricate cuts and things like that with vinyl, but again, needs a great blade, needs to make sure it's stuck down on the mat, and you're probably gonna wanna learn a skill called reverse weeding. So, yes. super fun, great question. And also, if you're doing like intricate cardstock cuts, you can use the intricate cut setting. The intricate cardstock cut setting is helpful too. Okay, this one's so little. I'm just gonna I'm gonna eyeball him. I feel like it would be harder for me to do it the other way around. Oh, that's the most stressful part of the whole thing. Yeah, <laughs> but you did it. Look how easy. I was holding my breath. Okay, so we have our sections. Now what we're gonna need to do is apply foam tape to these two squares. So I'm going to flip these over. We're gonna add foam squares all the way around the perimeter. I'm just gonna do one on each corner. Y'all, we are, this is it. We're wrapping up. I'm hoping that you all start making these today. If you were not here about 20 minutes ago, Tanner, <gasps> yep. Tanner let everyone know in our members only Facebook group, if you create these, you're gonna be getting a $50 gift card for Amazon. We're picking one person. Um, so it's gonna be like a little contest. We're yeah. gonna pick someone at random uh, before, at, you have to submit before 11 a.m. Eastern on Wednesday. So next Wednesday, I believe is the 26th. And that's a great way to just celebrate Christmas in July with our members. So please be sure to make the project and we'll share in the Facebook group to remind you guys too. So, yay. yay. I was telling Courtney that this is kind of random, but I'm putting these foam squares on and I cannot remember the crafter that I saw that did this. They sell craft supplies and I think they're an Instagrammer, but they make colored foam squares. Stop it. Yes. I'll imagine black foam squares, y'all. Oh my oh, I gosh. used to, oh my gosh, Alicia. Okay, what? back in my, Back in my paper crafting era, I had some of the most sticky black foam squares. And like, I, I was oh. such a foam square like snob. Person. I had like very thin ones. So this one's like a very thick foam square we're using, but they have even like thinner ones. So if you're gonna do this in like six layers per se, yes. that would be crazy, but a lot of fun. <laughs> you want to use a thinner foam square. Right. Did anyone else do Stampin' Up? I used to die over their tiny little foam squares or just me. <laughs> so anyway. I love that. Okay. So now let me get over top of this so I don't totally butcher it. Okay. So now we, I already removed the other side of our foam squares and I'm just lining this up. I'm going to push down on each corner to make sure it's adhered really well. And then I'm gonna do the same thing for our top layer, okay? Love it. And then that is all she wrote. What do y'all think? Oh my gosh. You How did it already? 
Oh my gosh. That's it. Guys, not hard at all. Let me see. I love They're it. They're so pretty. I love it. They're so much fun. And then the best part, I mean, you've got everything. You can write your little yeah. note in here. You can have the Christmas. cricket. You can have the cricket write the note. This yes. would be so honestly, y'all, this project would be so good to do as your Christmas card. You could batch this. You could Oh, it yeah. all, cut it all, you know, decorate it all, mm -hmm. and it's go ship really well. I know a lot of people were asking about like envelope size. This right here mm -hmm. will fit in a traditional like pop 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 envelope. It's not super. Yeah. It's not super thick. Like this is you're fine. Yeah. But if you got super super thick, you it would be tight. Right. So just be careful. We love it. We love doing Yay, cards. I mean, this so probably fun. costs like a dollar. Maybe. Maybe a dollar. Maybe a dollar. I don't yeah. even know. The ink was probably the most expensive. Right. <laughs> <laughs> the most expensive part, which is super fun. <laughs> so. so I've got all of our ornament supplies here. Um, there's lots of different things going on here. And the reason I have so much is because I wanted to kind of show you all a couple things that we don't like and a couple things that we do like. So if we can go overhead, this is what we're going to be making. So this is this one doesn't have any vinyl on it. We are going to be applying some vinyl to it. But this is just a pink glitter ornament. This is glass. So that is going to be my first little tip for you all. Glass is going to be your best bet whenever you're making these glitter ornaments. And I could not find, Lauren made one with polycrylic and plastic ornaments. This is a plastic ornament. You can hear the difference. This is plastic. It's very possible. And then I thought I could make one really quick, but I may be able to just show you all kind of what happens. Basically, we're going to be filling this with a polycrylic and then putting glitter in it. But when you use plastic ornaments, the glitter tends to separate and slide and it doesn't look solid like this one does. So you can see this one is very evenly coated. There's no breakage. Like you, if you see the polycrylic and the glitter, it breaks up really bad and it like chunks the glitter together. It's not cute. So make sure you all are purchasing glass ornaments. Plastic is just a no-go if you're using the polycrylic. So first thing you're going to need, glass ornaments. These are the ones that we use. These are from Hobby Lobby and usually they're like 40% off. So $7.99 for four of them. And if 40% off, like you're getting a pretty good deal. So these are the flat ones. Now I brought some round ones in here basically to show you all. Um, we, you can do the glitter ornaments on these glass round ones, but the vinyl application process is a lot harder with the sphere shaped glass ornaments rather than these pillow shaped ornaments. So you can definitely do glitter. Like if you just wanted to put glitter on these, you can even put vinyl on them, but you all can see this is such a round surface. It's gonna be a lot harder for you to actually apply vinyl to the surface of this one versus these guys that are flat. You can see they're skinnier and this is like a flat surface. It's semi domed, but it's gonna be a lot easier for us to put the vinyl on. So we like the pillowed, glass ornaments those are our favorite ones for making these polycrylic glitter ones we've got our ornament situation i'll give you guys tips as we go through on things that we prefer um, just because i don't want to overwhelm you right on the get about what you're going to need um, so we're going to be starting off with our base so this is just our glass pillow top ornaments I'm obviously going to be putting some vinyl on here. So what we're going to need to do is measure this and then go into design space and go ahead and lay out what we're going to want to do with our vinyl. So let me find a measuring tape. Of course, I didn't bring one in here. Oh, wait, I got, I found one. I found our little mini one. Okay. So before we do anything, I'm going to measure our little ornament guy here. Okay. And there's probably measurements on the box, honestly, y'all. This is four inches across. I'm going to assume it's four inches top to bottom. Okay. This is, let's go to the share screen. This is where the membership is going to start to come in handy. So if you get into the membership, we have the 30 days to match your cricket. That's going to help you get your cricket opened, get yourself comfortable, acclimated with the cricket, as well as design space. Um, so that's going to be really beneficial if you were brand new to cricketing. Make sure you're taking that 30 days to master your cricket 
it's in your dashboard under um, courses and it will be there so you can actually walk through the steps to get to this point. So once you've got Design Space open and you have your Cricut, what we're going to do, we're just going to start with a basic shape. So Cricut comes with all of these basic shapes right here. If you have access, you'll get these shapes down here. But if you're a member, these shapes are included in the membership. So don't feel like you need to get Cricut Access, which is like the fancy version of Design Space. You can get basic Cricut Design Space plus our membership and you're like good to go. So I've got this little circle right here and I'm just going to come up to the top middle and we are going to adjust this to a four by four square. Now since this is locked right here, if I put a four in the width and hit the tab key, it'll automatically adjust that four over there. If I hit, if I had this unlocked, I could manually put in separate two different numbers. Does that make sense to everybody? And then I'm just going to change this to what? So this is like my template. This is, I don't want my design any bigger than this because I need it to fit onto our pillow top ornament. So I'm going to zoom in. Okay. Now this is the fun part for me. So this is basically where you're going to get to pick out whatever image out of our library of over 15,000 images on makersgonnalearn.com. Let's go over to our website. Okay. Now I'm just on the home page of the website. You're going to need to make sure that you're logged in. This little icon up here, this person icon, it, this is where you're going to find your login and log out. We are already logged in. And so from here, if I was searching for a cut file, for instance, I could go to new cut files. This is going to give you our most up to date cut files. I could come up here to cut files and select that. Or you could always go to your dashboard and then you can get to your cut files from there as well. So you've got a few different ways to get to where you need to go. And then you can see it's going to automatically take us to our newest cut files. So we've got tons of different options in here. Oh my gosh, look at that smiley cup wrap. I hadn't seen that. Oh, that would be so cute on like a Stanley or something. Mm -hmm. I love it. So since we're doing Christmas today, I am just going to search Christmas. I don't, do we, we, do we have, have a Christmas a, category? Yes. Okay. Scroll to the top. So drop down menu, you can see, you can just scroll right here and select Christmas. This is going to give you all of our Christmas files. And let's see how many pages there are, y'all. We got, we go hard for Christmas around here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's scroll to the bottom. It yeah, says four, but there's more, there's more than that. There's like thousands of Christmas cut files. Yeah. And we really commit to Christmas. So you can see there's all of these. Now, if you had a certain thing in mind, like if you wanted to search rain, uh, reindeer or Santa or something like that, you totally can, or you're just welcome to browse through all of these images. So we're just going to kind of scroll and see if we see anything we want to put on our ornament. Now you have the option of doing like a text design. If you wanted to just type out your own text, if you wanted to personalize your ornament, you could put like a last name, you could do a monogram, something like that. Or you can just, you know, use these SVGs that are already designed for you, which I really love. So when I'm thinking of that like bright pink, what's yes. the first thing you think of if you were to make an ornament with that color? Uh, for like Christmas related? Can I'm gonna, be. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I'm thinking like a smiley face with a Santa hat. That would be cute. What are you thinking? My first thought with that pink when I saw that pink was have a holly dolly Christmas. Oh, <gasps> stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I didn't, okay, can we do it with this pink? Is like, can pink? we do a holly dolly Christmas with this? Or should you go get the pink, the hot pink? It doesn't matter. Okay, I'm obsessed. Let's do that. We have, do we have, we don't have, might not have any dolly files, but, so Lauren is saying have a holly dolly Christmas. If you're from Tennessee or if, uh, if you're from anywhere, everybody knows who Dolly Parton is, right? <laughs> yeah. She's queen. Super, she's the queen. She's the queen. Okay. So you can select an image. Um, let me just download one just to show you all how you can actually take an SVG image, which is a cuttable image pull it into Design Space and use it on the template that we set up. 
and then I'll show you how to do the fonts. So let's just pick, oh gosh, I don't know. I'm feeling pressured. There's a baby Jesus. Let me go one more page. <laughs> just one more. I don't think we We don't want to go, oh, no, we don't want him. Not today. That's not, that wouldn't be t awful. No, but not today. Just something that would make sense on, should we just search Santa? Let's sure. see. Okay. Holly, we are using your name. Okay, this is perfect. This little Santa, this is one of my favorite images that we have. Okay, I'm just, I really just want this Merry Christmas. So you all can see there's like a Santa and a Merry Christmas. I'm going to show you all what I do if I just want a portion of an image. So I'm going to download that image by selecting this little download icon. It's going to pull into a zip folder. Now I can see my zip folder right here. If you do not see that, go to your downloads on, if you've got a Windows, we have a mini Mac, which is like a Windows Mac hybrid. Um, but normally it'll pop into a zip folder on the bottom. Sometimes it'll be at the top right on certain computers. And I'm just going to double click that zip folder and that's going to un zip my folder. If you're like, I'm lost, you can go back and rewatch this. So you can kind of pause, take a step, continue. So double click the zip folder, then we're going to double click the folder, the actual folder, and you can see our images are in here. Now if you're new to cricketing and you're like, there's two, which one do I pick? There's PNGs and SVGs. A lot of times you will see this whenever you download our images, and that is because the PNGs are our printable network graphics. They're print and cut images. They're basically images that you're gonna use when you're using the print then cut feature on the Cricut. We are gonna be cutting vinyl only, and so the SVGs are the cut images. So I just need this little SVG, okay? So I'm just going to keep my download pulled up right here and we're just going to go back to design space. Okay. This is our template that we made. And then we're going to come over to upload right here on this left sidebar and then upload image. And then what I like to do, you can move design space over and then click and drag, or you can always browse and then go into your downloads and they're going to be inside of there. So I'm just going to pull this over, click and drag. Took me a little while to get used to, but I really, really love clicking and dragging now. I, I just didn't want to do it in the beginning for whatever reason. And then I'm just going to select upload. Okay, so this puts it into our uploads, but it doesn't put it onto our canvas yet. So I've got my image right here. I'm going to add it to canvas. And you can see it comes in exactly like it was on the display. It's gigantic though, so way, way too big. And it also has all of the other elements. So we were just wanting this Merry Christmas. So what you can do over here is a layers panel. This has all of the layers for this singular image. So you can see I can select just the Santa and I can hit delete on my keyboard and it's going to delete him off. And then we're left with the parts that we wanted. Now there are like the star up here. I don't want him. There are ways to get rid of that. You can go down here on the bottom right and hit contour and then just select whatever you don't want to see. So I don't want that star up there in the corner. I just want. I don't know that images. I wouldn't get rid of that one on the top, on the top left. Top left too. I know. So you can go back and you can take off literally any of those. And we're gonna go, we're gonna do a text image, but I just wanna show you all how easy that was. I mean, literally, like if we put a timer on it, like two minutes. Yeah. And that's me just kind of slowing it down. So that's what you can do if you wanted to do a cut image. One thing that really I've discovered <laughs> takes the longest time when it comes to designing mm -hmm. something is looking through all the files. Yes, like finding one that just makes your heart sing. Right. I agree with that 100%. So that's one way. Now, what I'm gonna do, we're gonna like, we can cut two different images. We'll keep this one here. Um, if I wanted to do another one, I'm just gonna duplicate my template by clicking this, and then you can hit this little duplicate button. So I'm gonna have another one here. This is gonna be our holly dolly Christmas template, okay? 
So what I'm going to do is go back to our website. I'm going to show you all how to download a font from our website now. So you can go to fonts from here. If you are on the main page, it's right beside our cut files. So you can see the new fonts right here, or you can go into your dashboard and it's also located in your dashboard. So lots of different routes to get there. And you'll probably end up picking one and just like marrying that. Mm -hmm. I usually use all those like top links on the top. Is that how you get to yours? Yeah. Yeah, me too. So now used to when we first had our website, it would take you straight to the dashboard when you logged in. Oh. So I would do everything from the dashboard. Okay. But now it's like taking you to the home page instead yes. of the dashboard. Yes, which either way, and you kind of adjust. So okay, I'm thinking in my brain. So what I kind of like to think about what I want it to look like before I start going and searching for things. So for me, I'm going to use two different fonts for this, and I already have one in mind. We have a font called Giddy Up. I'm going to use that Have a Holly. Dolly's going to be in a script, and then Christmas will be in Giddy Up. Okay. So we need to search a font. So you can search a font. If you already know a font, with, which if you're new, you're not familiar with the fonts yet, that is totally okay. You can go in here and search through all these fonts. We have different pages. We have categories for you all as well. So you can see, I can just literally choose a page and like click through different fonts. Or if I wanted to select a certain font style, you can see there's a drop down menu here for that too. So if you're looking for a script or looking for a basic font, anything like that, you can just select one of these and it's gonna take you to all of the fonts that are considered basic or considered whatever. So that's really nice. But we're wanting to do the Giddy Up font. I'm going to go ahead and type out what I'm wanting my image to say. So it's going to say, have a Holly Dolly Christmas. We're going to do Dolly in a script, though. But I already just... think I have an idea for a script. What? Which one? With the Giddy Up. Okay. I what? think the Nomad would be really cute. Oh, yes. Listen, I already used that font today on another project. I just oh. love it. It's one of my favorite fonts. Okay, so you can see... Have a holly and Christmas. That's what they're going to look like in Design Space. So I'm going to go ahead and download this font. Okay, just select the little download icon. It's going to go into a zip folder just exactly like an image would. And we're going to double click that folder to open it. If you don't see it down here in the bottom, just go to your downloads folder on your computer, wherever that is located. You can search for it on your computer and it should pop up. And then you can see here, it's a giddyup.otf. That's the file we want. I'm gonna double click it, and then I'm going to install the font onto my computer. So it's on my computer, excuse me, but it's not in Design Space. And so we can't stop here. I've downloaded it, but it's just on my computer. It has to be on Design Space, on our, um, um, like our cloud, I guess you could call it. So what you need to do before we reload Design Space is save our project. I'm just going to save this as Holly Dolly. If your name is Holly, you're probably like, huh? Huh? <laughs> because we keep saying Holly. And I'm going to save it. Okay. And then we're just going to reload. And that's all you have to do to get your font into Design Space. When I first did this, I was like, are y'all sure? Like, are you sure? Because if you use more advanced, um, like, design software, like Illustrator and stuff, you have to, like, import it, and, like, there's a whole process. But that's it. And so now I'm going to create a text box. Let me zoom in. I'm just going to hit this T right here on the left panel. Okay. So automatically it's going to put it as Cricut Sans. What we need to do is come up here to our font drop-down menu. You can move this around wherever your heart desires so it's out of the way and then i'm going to go to system fonts system fonts are where all of our downloaded fonts are and that's where giddy up is going to live so you can search the font that you want and then select it there how cute is that y'all that is the cutest font i'm obsessed okay and so now i can resize it using the bounding box and we're just going to type out have a holly dolly christmas I'm like singing it in my head. Okay. And I skipped Dolly because we're going to do her in a script. 
but you're going to need to resize everything. Christmas is so big, it's making the rest of our words small. I'm kind of weird about like wanting all of my text to be the same size. Are you the same way? Mm -mm. So I'm going to... I'm going to ungroup this to lines so that we can resize the have a holly bigger. Because that's what you're thinking, right? Have a holly should be bigger. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was just going <coughs> to manipulate it to put them together and then yes. maybe make and it And then a little stretch bigger. them. Yeah. Okay. So right now, they're all this text is in the same text box. But what I want to do, Lauren was saying to move the have a and holly closer together bump them up a little bit, and then make them bigger, and then we'll slide the dolly in. So what we're going to need to do first is go up here to this advanced option. You're going to have a drop-down menu. We're going to ungroup to lines. So this is going to separate every line of text to its own bounding box. And you can see here, whenever I select the have a, since it was on its own line, it's going to be separate from the other ones. So we've got both of those there. Actually, now that you do that, it doesn't kinda, look that bad. It doesn't look bad because you have enough room to make Put dolly pretty big. Okay. So we're not going to resize it. But if you wanted to adjust the sizing a little bit, I like to adjust them together. So like you can select holly, hold the shift key down, and select have a, and you can resize them at the same time if you wanted to do that. But I'm just going to keep it as it is. Okay. So, the next thing I'm going to do is, what font did we say? Nomad. Nomad. We probably already have it. Yeah. Um, we'll go, I'll go through the font downloading situation one more time for you all. So, if there's a font that you want or a style that you want, you can go over to our fonts. I'm just going to select script. And we're looking, we're going to be doing the word dolly. And I'm going to hit preview. And this way you can see right here in all these sample texts, you can see the word dolly. This is the font that we were talking about using. So whenever you're pairing fonts, and I'm like super weird about this, like if you're using a thick font, you don't want anything super thick for your contrasting font. There's that like is a happy a, that, medium. That's a big, oh, that moonlight too would be cute. Yeah, that would be cute. The biggest thing when it comes to pairing fonts is not to pair a thick and a thick or a thin and a thin. Right. It needs to be opposites. Or like you don't want to do a script and a script. Right. Or a basic and a basic. Right. If it is a basic and a basic, it needs to be like a thick basic with a thin basic. Right. So. And I have noted, I, I did say a thin and a thin. I did say don't do a thin and a thin. But if you did a thin, very basic with a thin script, it could work. Right. There are exceptions. <laughs> really and truly, it's 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 more about finding the ones that look really well together and contrasting so that yes. one word or one phrase sticks out from the rest. It's the mm -hmm. contracting or contrasting factor that is the biggest thing with font pairing. Right. And not only that, but like we want Dolly, like whenever you're thinking of your design, you want Dolly in my head is the most important thing on the design because it's pink and it's dolly and it screams dolly so I, I need my design to say have a holly dolly christmas but if you put it in the same font like if we use giddy up for the whole thing it's just gonna be like oh it, i didn't realize it had dolly on it but then it just makes it more relevant whenever we change it to a really like bougie script font or like a really fancy script font so I'm actually kind of feeling this Angelina because it looks like a signature. Okay. You know, like a movie yeah. star signature. I like Vegas too, but that tag on that that tail. Would, it's going to throw off. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. We're going to go with Angelina. I'm just going to select that little down arrow download icon. And then I am going to do double click this zip folder. And you can see it pops it into a .otf. Once again, I'm going to double click this and we're going to install the font onto the computer. So it's not in Design Space yet, not technically. We'll go back to Design Space, okay? Save your work, save it first, and then it'll tell you project saved. We're going to hit view and reload, and then our font will automatically download into Design Space. So now I'm going to go to my system fonts and with what was it called? Angelina? Yeah. Okay. And I Hope, I think you're going to, it's not, it's a jagged edge font, ain't it? Yes, yes, but that's okay. We can talk, we can talk about this. Let me type out Dolly just so we can get, show you all what it looks like. Okay, 
So Lauren just said it's a jagged font. Can you guys see what we're talking about here? Look at this font right here. All of these. This font is so cute. And I pick this font a lot because I always am like, oh, dang it, because there's these little cuts, which are not great when you're cutting vinyl. Like these teeny weeny cuts are not great for cutting vinyl. Mm -hmm. They are beautiful whenever you're doing print the cut images or large scale images. We're doing something so small, like our circle is just four inches. So right. When it's doing cuts like that, it starts like jacking up the vinyl. It's like not, it doesn't look good. It's I love good. that font though. I know. Okay, I'm going to try I'm going to try something. There is something you can do, but I don't want to confuse people. Okay, well, you know, you're right. I, because I was going to do what you're thinking. Yeah. I'm not going to do that. So let's go ahead. Let's just go to our fonts that we already have. So we already have like lots of fonts downloaded on the computer. What I'm going to do is just X off of that search font, and we can scroll through the ones that we've already got downloaded. You can see we have tons because we are constantly downloading new fonts. I'm going to actually shrink this so you all can see what the heck's going on. And then you can just browse through Design Space and look at all of your script fonts. No, that's enough. That is not it. Oh, Addy Kate's one of my favorites, so I pick it a lot. Okay, let's see. I was thinking something like any Carol in the beginning, but I think it's too thick. Baby Cakes is always a safe. I liked the one before Addie Kate. Let's see. Uh, Affirmations? Yeah. Okay. So, and we can do a couple different colors of vinyl. Try it. Or we can shrink it. Maybe just a little bit bigger and do an offset. And slice out the offset. Yeah, just in like the tips of the words. Okay, we can do that. So what we're going to do, we're just kind of... Okay, this is maybe more, what we're fixing to do, maybe a little bit more of an advanced technique. That's okay. I think yeah. It's, a, it's like a... a Step up advanced technique. It's right. nothing crazy. Okay, so what you're, we're running into, as you all can see, the words are just kind of running into each other. But I want Dolly to be like really loud and big because that's Dolly. That's her personality. Right. And so what we're going to do is create an offset on the word Dolly. And then we're going to slice it out of the words around it. This is going to create a small space around Dolly so that it's separated from the Have a Holly in Christmas. And when I do it, you all are going to be able to see what I mean. So just follow me step by step. We're going to adjust the sizing exactly to the size that you want it. So Dolly is exactly how we want it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to select Dolly. Okay, I've got it selected. Up here on the top middle, there's an offset function. I'm going to select that and you're going to get a drop down menu. Now, initially, you can see there's a blue line. It's a quarter inch line all the way around Dolly. That is way too much. We just, wouldn't be able to read the words. Right. Like it's cutting. You can see that blue line is going to cut into all of everything that it's crossing over. So we're just going to try a point one. I'm going to hit tab. Mm, that's still way too much. You can see it's going to be cutting into all of this. Mm -hmm. We just really want it to kind of hug. Let's try point zero five. Yes. I'm going to even do a three. I, I'm, I feel better with that. Okay. Okay. So, point zero three offset, and then I'm going to hit apply. Okay. Over here in the layers panel, you can see there's the offset we created. Here's the original dolly. Here's the offset. Now, I need to slice the offset out of the have a holly in Christmas but you can only do the slice with two layers of images so right now we would have have a holly and Christmas and the offset to slice out of so what I'm gonna do y'all with me I'm just gonna select holly and Christmas holly I'm gonna hold the shift key down select Christmas and I'm going to unite them okay this is gonna make it one image Okay, so this is one image.
Holly and Christmas are one image. I'm going to hold the shift key down, select Dolly, offset, Dolly offset. So we've got the United image, the Dolly offset, and then we're going to come down here and hit. Now it looks crazy. Yes. And but just hold up. Look at the layers panel too. I want you all to see what's going on over here. So there's like these slice results. We don't need all of those. So what we're going to do is just remove them. Hold on. We can remove them right here. And then I need to remove this one as well. Mm. If you accidentally delete the wrong layer, you can come up here and undo it. You can Command Z or you can undo it. Okay. Can y'all see how much better that looks right now? Like, okay. Yeah. So if you're like, oh, it just happened. I want you all, I want to encourage you all to go back and rewatch that. That's such a good little thing. And me and Lauren do this all the time in our design process. Yes. I do this constantly. I did it today. Mm -hmm. I literally did it for our masterclass. So this is all you're going to need to do. And so now what we need to do is cut it out. Well, you need to bring it all together first. Well, yes. So before we cut it all out, I'm just going to get rid of the circle because we don't, we don't need it. Let me get rid of this circle over here. Okay, before I cut it, I want this to all cut out. I'm not going to cut it on two different colors. No, I think cutting it with the same yeah. color is... We're just, we're just going to keep it simple. Yep. So, all this is going to be cut out of the same color, but it is on different layers right now. So, you can see all of this is on a different layer. So, if I go to make it, and I'm going to delete this stuff over here. We don't... So, it's not confusing you all. Let's just delete it. Okay. Okay. I want to show you all what happens if I just were to go to make it because it looks like, oh my gosh, it's perfect. When I go to make it, I want to show you what happens here. So there's, it's going to be dispersed. It's not going to be exactly where we designed it on the canvas. Maybe. Mm -hmm. okay, it's going to be everywhere. Yes. So like not a good time. I don't want you all going in here and cutting this out and then cutting this and having to place it on your own. No, we love design space to do the work for us. And so what we're going to do is select everything, just click and drag with your mouse, and I'm going to attach it. A lot of times people want to group it, but that's not going to work. If you group it, everything's still going to go on the mat where you do not want it. We need to attach it. It's all coming out of the same color, so attaching is our best bet. And then when you go to make it, you can see right here, we can zoom in, it's all exactly where it was on the canvas. This is what we want, okay? And so we're, the low top is on the mat. We are using a 12 by 12 mat and probably a 12 by 12 piece of vinyl. And then I'm going to select continue. Okay, we're using the, what are we using? The, the explore. Probably should turn it on. So, uh -huh. we can use it. so what kind of vinyl, what color vinyl are you using? Uh, let's pick it out. So we have lots, lots of mm, colors I here. I that green. Look at this. You like this one? I don't think you'll be able to read it in that holographic, unfortunately. I know. It depends probably what color. So really, let's let's stay in design space for a second. I don't want to get off topic. Okay. So I've got, let me refresh this because my machine was not on. So now you can see it's going to try to connect to my Explore 3. And we are going to need to browse all materials. But Lauren was wanting to pick out which vinyl we wanted. So this step's going to be really important for us first because there are different cut settings for different types of vinyl. So Lauren was really liking this green metallic. Can y'all look how pretty this is? Which we don't have to. I love it. I think we should. With that hot pink? Yes. Okay, let's do it. So we're going to do this. So this would not be just our standard vinyl. It wouldn't be cut on a premium vinyl setting. This is going to actually be cut on a metallic vinyl setting. If we were to use this red shimmer there's like a like a sh is it a shimmer glitter setting there's different yeah. settings for different types like there's even a holographic vinyl setting that you would cut this with mm -hmm. so make sure depending on what vinyl you use if you just use like this standard green right here it would just be a premium vinyl or standard vinyl cut setting okay but we're going to be using this metallic green so i'm going to go into design space and hit browse all materials 
And then up here on the top right, you can search metallic. And you can see there's lots of different metallics. Um, there is like a smart vinyl matte metallic. We're not using smart vinyl. This is a textured metallic we could use. Is that not tech wrap? Probably. That's why I was just looking I at just it. I just think you need to cut it on the tech wrap settings. Oh. Because I think it's tech wrap vinyl. Is it? I wish that tech wrap would label the backing. Some of their stuff is. Is it? Mm -hmm. Like their HTV? Or their, no, their regular There's vinyl? Been a, I've had some permanent vinyl that's been... It definitely feels like tech wrap. It's tech wrap. Like, okay, it's we don't wrap. have the tech wrap unless we've saved it as tech. T-E-C. Um, there's the tech wrap puff. I thought we did too. We do have one of those sheets in that bottom drawer in there I'll if you want to get it. it. Yep. Okay, so... And this is good because where we talked about... Um, Tech wrap being on sale. Yes, if you all if snagged you purchased, any of that tech wrap yesterday. Yeah. Um, so tech wrap is just a standard, it's a brand of an adhesive vinyl. So you'll see us talk about Caesar, you'll hear us talk about Starcraft. Those are brands of adhesive vinyl or heat transfer vinyl. So the tech wrap has its like own special cut settings. It's a little bit thicker. The quality is really, really, really good though. So I'll show you all in Design Space how to create your own cut setting for this specific vinyl. And there's a little sheet whenever you order the tech wraps that come with the vinyls that you're gonna need to save and it'll tell you exactly the pressure you need to cut on and all of that. So I see some of you, Tara got some. Oh my gosh, Tara, you're gonna love it. You're gonna die, it's like so good. So the green that we're using is the tech wrap. Today. I'm not seeing it, but I'm pretty sure the cut settings are 185. Okay. So Lauren says the pressure settings are 185 for tech wrap. So let's go into the share screen. I'm going to show you all what to do. So if you got tech wrap vinyl and you're like, it's not cutting on the premium vinyl setting or the whatever. Because you, trust us, it did it not for us at first. It doesn't. And I thought, we, we thought... We were like, we don't like tech wrap. Like, no, we figured out it was us. It was the cut settings. So you're gonna need to go to browse all materials, okay? And then material settings down here on the bottom left, select that, okay? And we're gonna scroll all the way down. And we're gonna add new material, okay? I'm gonna name it T-E, is it T-E-C-K? Uh-huh. And then wrap, mm -hmm. and then we're just gonna hit save. And then what it's gonna do is ask us to select what pressure we would want on it. And Lauren is saying that it was 185. I'm almost positive, yeah. Okay, and you can even select if you want multiple passes, which we don't, you can even select what blade. We're gonna keep it on the fine point blade and then save it. I'm gonna select done. And then we can go back into browse all materials and you can actually just search tech wrap. And you can see right here, that's the setting that we made. Okay, so now if we can go overhead, all we're gonna be doing is putting our vinyl onto our mat. So you need these mats to cut with your Cricut, okay? I did not start out cutting with a Cricut and I did not use a mat to cut. So I was very confused what the mat was for when I first started and then I was like, oh, this mat makes everything so much better. So typically we're gonna line it up on the top left corner and you can see we've already used some of this. That's totally fine. It's gonna be cutting up here in the section because you saw in design space, our design was up here. And I am going to take a burnishing tool or a squeegee and make sure this is down. So now our vinyl is gonna stay on our mat. And then we are just gonna come over to the Cricut. I'm gonna slide it under the little lip on each side. I like to put a little bit of pressure on the end there so that it loads all the way in and then once this light starts flashing, we will hit go and it's gonna work its magic. While it cuts, should we jump into the polycrylic? Yes. I feel like it's, not, it's gonna take a second to cut that. So what I've got here, I don't have the pink glitter in here. Should we use one of these or do you wanna go get that hot pink? 
Oh, I was thinking that with that green would be very pretty. Oh, uh, okay. I do too. I think that's going to be really pretty. Okay, so. Like the darker. I don't know that the hot pink would be as pretty with that green. I'm thinking the deeper yes. pink that you've got right there would be really pretty with that green. I've been dying to use this color. We've had it for months and months. And this is from, this glitter is from Little Lattes. She is like a small Instagram shop. And I purchased some other glitter for a snow globe tumbler from her so beautiful she makes her own glitters she also makes the beer can glass snow globe tumblers and they stay sold out mm -hmm. so she is like doing the thing over there and i love i just love it she has a really cute aesthetic too if you go look at her page and then another favorite of glitter is the starcraft brand glitter you can buy these on the 143 vinyl website we have i bet we have every color when you say um very close to it if we there's go and couple, add these <laughs> there's a couple patterned um glitters that they have that i know we don't have oh yes i know there's, there's a couple <laughs> there's a couple glitters that are like shaped glitters that they have that i know for a fact we don't have they're a little bit more risque if you will <laughs> if you will if you will <laughs> if you will so um but anyways they have some really good fine glitters and actually, this little lattes is like a chunky fine glitter mix. Um, would you suggest doing all chunky? I feel like no. you need a combination. You have to have a combination. Yeah, like if anything, you need most, like you can do just a fine glitter, but you couldn't do just a chunky glitter or we wouldn't recommend it. It's better if you do either a fine glitter or a fine and chunky glitter mix. Yes. So if you wanted to mix a fine and chunky glitter together, you could. Like if we had a chunky blue or another color we wanted to mix with this, we could. And you can see this one has some fine and chunky pieces in it, which I think looks so pretty in these glitter ornaments. Mm -hmm. So I've got my glitter. I'm going to just have a cup ready for any excess polycrylic. And then what you're gonna need to do is get some polycrylic. So this is just like a crystal clear finish, um, standard polycrylic, it's water-based. The brand is Minwax. And I'm gonna pop this open just to show you all what it looks like. I've already got some in this little bottle right here. So you can see, ooh, you can see it's just like a milky consistency. Now, you're not gonna wanna pour this directly out of the can. You can use pipettes. I brought some in here. This is one way to do it. And I brought them just to show you all, but um, I haven't even opened these. Um, oh yeah, I did. So these are like these little pipettes. You can just squeeze in, draw it up, and then put it inside the ornament. But the best technique that we have found, and this is one that we highly recommend, is these little squeeze bottles. And I'll add this to like our links for you all after the show. But this has the polycrylic in it and it keeps it fresh. It doesn't dry it out or anything like that. And what you're going to be able to do is just squeeze this directly into your ornaments. This so, is super helpful, I think, especially if you're making multiple glitter ornaments at a time. Yes, for sure. Okay. So I'm just going to pop this out being very careful. Okay. And I'm just going to take this. And a little goes a long way, y'all. So I'm just kind of lining it. And I've got a cup here because if I have any excess, I can just let it pour into the cup. And you want to make sure to get this very evenly coated, even up here on the neck, but I'm going to get it last. So we're just letting it kind of fill up the space. feel like it's covered. I don't know. I feel like I'm going to put a little bit more because I can always pour out the excess if I need to. And I'm trying to fill in the neck of this one. You can see I've got some excess coming out. What I'm going to do is let that sit and kind of drip for a minute and we're going to weed our vinyl. Ooh, that makes me nervous. Okay, I'm just going to let it sit. <laughs> And then before, if we can come over to the Cricut view, before I remove this, I'm going to make sure this cut all the way through, especially when you're working with metallic vinyl, because it needs more pressure to cut through, and sometimes we just don't get it, especially this is a with little, tech wrap. This is a little trick of the trade. If you always make sure it's cut through before you um, unload it, because mm -hmm. once you unload it, 
things can change and move around in design space, but you can send it, but you can hit the play button again and send it back through if it's not cut all the way through. Exactly. And this cut really good. So that 185 must have been on the money. It's the sweet spot for it tech wrap. So I'm going to go ahead and unload this. You all can see overhead how I can tell that it weeded. I just lifted up some of these little pieces to make sure it cut all the way through. And then what we're going to do is remove the excess vinyl. So I'm going to keep this vinyl on the mat to weed it, but I'm going to cut around it because we don't need to weed off all this vinyl. We can use this vinyl for another project later on. So yes, Brenda, we have etched um, glitter ornaments before. The problem with etching glitter ornaments is you see the etching before you add the glitter, but it's like after you add the glitter, the etching like go, you can't see it at all. The only way that we were able to see the etched glass on a glitter ornament is if I added rub and buff on the outside, but rub and buff on etching will work, but you're only limited to like pretty much black because yes. the gold did not show up at all. Um, so I just don't think I'd, it just ends up being a waste of time. It does. Honestly, it, it really does. does, but you can do it. It's just like kind of pointless. Yeah. So now what I'm doing, I've just, this is a weeding tool right here. If you're brand, brand new weeding tool, I'm taking it and it's very sharp and you can just kind of stab into the vinyl and lift. And I'm just very carefully removing all the vinyl that I don't need. So I don't want anything from my letters to be removed. This cuts so good. This is like butter. I love when it happens like this. <laughs> Sometimes it's not that smooth. I will just warn you. You know what I'm gonna need, Lauren? What? Tech wrap transfer tape. Um, we have some, I think, in that little shelf. This one should be fine, I think. Okay. Uh, well, actually, I don't know some. if I have any transfer tape well, in I'll here. Well, I'll go grab some, tra some tech wrap just in case. Okay. Just to be on the safe side. And then <coughs> I'm just removing the middles of these letters and just very carefully, because we don't want any of that in here. Okay. This green's going to look so good with that glitter color. And I was telling Lauren, I was asking her if she would bring me the tech wrap transfer because I have. I have found that the tech wrap doesn't transfer as well with non tech wrap brand transfer tapes, but mostly we use like masking transfer. Um, I really like the Caesar transfer tape to transfer my vinyl decals, um, but the tech wrap, I always use the tech wrap brand because it just works better, especially when I'm working with like specialty vinyls like this metallic, I feel like this will work better. So we did have a question. Heather asked, how obvious is it that when um, that it's cut through when you do check? Sometimes I feel like some areas are cut through, um, but not where I quote unquote checked. Is there a trick? My advice to you is check multiple areas. So check yes. like the bottom right and then the top left. And if you're questioning it, if, if you really look and look hard, you should see that it has cut through. Yes. You should be able to, and so once you've checked at least the top, like one top corner and an opposite bottom corner, it should be good. Yeah. So I've got my transfer tape here. I'm just going to remove the backing from my transfer tape. So you can see it's clear, which is great for transferring. And I've cut a piece off of it that's about the size of my decal. And we're just going to use the taco method. So fold it in half. And then you're just going to lay it right on top of your decal. Now, if you're super particular, these do have some grid lines. So you can kind of use the grid lines to line it up straight. If you're new here, I'm an eyeballer and I do not do precision. So it's just who I am as a person. I'm just owning it. So I've got that. I'm going to set it to the side and we are going to do the rest of our glitter ornament. So you can see I've got some pulling there. I'm just going to dump that out. If this was a little bit smaller of an ornament, it would probably just sit right there. But you can just kind of tap out the excess. And let it sit for one more second. I'm going to show you all how to get this glitter inside. If you're like, how are you going to do that? We are not just going to go and pour it in. Okay, this is one of Tanner's favorite things. And it's this copy paper 
funnel. It's like a paper funnel. We're just going to be making it. You can use notebook paper, copy paper, whatever you want. We're just going to start on one corner and our point's going to be down here. It doesn't need to be super narrow, but it just needs to fit into the hole of our Christmas ornament. Um, we did have another question. Where do you get the tech wrap transfer tape? Most of the time when you buy a pack of tr tech wrap um, vinyl, it comes with a couple sheets of transfer tape in the, in the pack. Yes, which is really helpful. <laughs> so I'm going to take some masking tape and we're just going to tape the edge of that. So you see we've just made this little cone out of copy paper and y'all can save this and use it if you're making a whole bunch of ornaments you can use this over and over and over again just want to make sure that it's gonna stay it's got a pretty good hole and we're using some chunky glitter so it doesn't need to be super super thin also we had someone ask are we doing christmas already honestly it's because it's we're doing a christmas in july sale <laughs> is yeah. why we're doing christmas because me and alicia were literally just talking earlier I know a lot of people, especially if they sell crafts during the holiday seasons, they start getting prepared for Christmas now. Mm -hmm. um, so if you are a seller and you are planning on selling your crafts for Christmas, that's kind of what we're doing. But we're having a little Christmas in July sale, so why, why not? not do a little couple Christmas projects? Right. Yeah, it, do, it does feel a little early to me too, but... Oh, for sure. It's all in fun, and not mm -hmm. only that, but like... This will be on the channel all year. So when y'all are ready, we'll be here. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. So I'm just opening this little baggie over the trash can because I don't want it to go everywhere. Ooh. Oh, my gosh. This is going to be so pretty. Okay. Lauren, do you have a you technique for how you do this? Or do you just? Well, do you need help? Because that's a little bit. Okay, you got it. I didn't know if you wanted to hold one of them. There's not really a technique. Okay. Okay. So use one hand, hold the funnel, and hold the thing. And we're just going to pour. I'm just doing a little bit at a time. Like, I'm not going to just go ham and pour this in here. Mainly because I don't want to waste a whole bunch of glitter. Just sit that to the side. And you can kind of knock this glitter around. You can see it's starting to fill in. That already looks really cool. Okay, that was too much. And I just said not to do that. <laughs> I was like, don't put too much. And then here I go. Okay, I'm just going to pull this out and kind of let this glitter roll around in here. Y'all, that is beautiful. This is where I like to put my finger and my thumb on it and just like shake vigorously. Okay, I feel like, here we go. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Oh, this is way more fun Yeah. than rolling it around. Just make sure you've got it completely covered. And then I have a separate cup here I can pour this glitter into and then I can get it actually... I'm going to pour it onto a sheet of paper, and then I can dump it back into my little baggie. Okay. That's beautiful. It's gorgeous. I'm actually obsessed. Look how much extra. <laughs> <laughs> so don't waste your glitter. Don't be like me. But we can put this back in. Y'all, come on. That's gorgeous. I love it. Okay, I'm just going to sit this to the side and do it after the show. But I am not wasting that glitter because she is beautiful. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, we have that. It's obviously going to need to dry. You need to let it dry. Don't put the topper on yet because if you do, it's going to scratch off anything in the neck of that ornament. But we can go ahead and apply our decal. So I'm going to use this little tape thing right here. And then I've got my decal ready to go. And I've already burnished it, but I'm just going to go over it one more time on the front. And I'm going to flip it over and burnish it on the back. And you're going to remove the backing. Okay. Here we go. Can y'all see me good? Hopefully my big old bun's not in the way. Oh my gosh. These colors. Okay. And then I'm going to kind of do a taco method. I'm just making sure I've got it lined up pretty good. Okay. So what I like to do, especially since this is like a semi-round surface, I'm going to kind of work my way from the middle with my finger and align everything up. Now, this is a good trick if you're doing like wine glasses particularly is what comes to mind. You can kind of cut slits in the vinyl 
and this allows the letters to lay down flat more easier, more better. More better for you. Oops. I don't want my D to have a lump in it. Okay. You can always also, one thing that I've noticed, especially with ornaments that I found is very helpful, is taking a, um, like once I get the transfer tape off, taking a weeding tool and going in and like kind of picking up one little area of a, that might have like a bubble in it yes. and laying it back down. Or even a true control knife if I have, if, I've ha if I have to on a curved surface and just cutting a little slit where yes. that hump is and laying it down flat and kind of overlapping it. And I may be able to show you all that with the D because I feel like that D did that, and I, but I could fix it the way you're saying. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I'm just removing the transfer tape. You can see my S is not on there. Slowly, slowly. This transfer tape is really good, though. Uh oh, you can see. If something starts to come up, you can lay it back down, transfer it back on. And y'all can see there's a little bubble. There's a bubble and like a little crease on my D. I'm going to try to fix it for you guys. Make sure you don't pull this up too fast because sometimes everything does not stick down. Nine times out of ten, something is not completely adhered down. So be very careful. These colors are beautiful. I'm obsessed. They look so good. So Lauren was talking about picking up the vinyl and kind of re-laying it down. You just want to make sure you're not stretching it. So be very, very careful. Sorry, I don't I know my head's right in the way. Okay, so I just kind of picked it up. I'm going to lay it back down. Okay, I'm just kind of taking my fingernail, flattening out any other pieces, and then you would just put your top in and you're done. You can always add a bow. I would definitely add a bow to this. Um, we just tie ribbons around the top middle, mm -hmm. and we're done. Let me show you guys close up. Look how cute. Is that that color combo is giving mm -hmm. life. Like, I'm obsessed. Okay. Yep. Love it. All right. What did you guys think? Hey, everybody.